Hey everyone, how are you guys today? It's Selena here at Amore Fabrics and I'm here to show you guys the how to make that Mother's Day journal that I made that was a prayer journal for my mother. If you're new here, don't forget the thumbs up, obviously like and subscribe, hit that notification bell if you like what you are seeing. Um, I am going to, as promised, give you guys not only the measurements for each fabric that you need, but to do the step-by-step -step on how I did it. It is really quick and easy. Don't forget, if you're going to be following along watching this, you're going to need a pen and paper or a pencil and paper, don't matter, to write down your measurements of each of the fabrics. Of course, I'm using upholstery fabrics in this, guys. So if you're going to use the um, any fabrics, I recommend upholstery fabrics. It's nice and thick. Not the lightweight upholstery, but like the medium to heavyweight upholstery. Um, so it can give you the um, thickness you need for this kind of journal. All right, guys. So what you're going to need is um, you might have to press pause. Like I said, grab that pen and paper to know what you're getting. I used only, I think, four fabrics. I used one, two, three, yeah, four different color fabrics in this. If you guys know, if you have been following along, you I have had these, these uh, fabric packs in the shop. If you're looking for these particular colors that I'm making, um, I do have them down below. It's not only them into the size packs that you see here, but also by the half yard options as well. So if you want more yardage, Say you want to cover your chair or something with one of these prints, it's there's an option. I have it there in the shop. My goal is to keep them in stock as long as I can um, until I can't, can't find that fabric anymore. So we'll try my best to keep those stock. So I got the four fabrics, as you see. So pick out four different upholstery fabrics that you like that go well together. These are the prints I picked out. You're going to need a, a manila envelope. Um, this one here, I'd run down the size so I wouldn't forget, is 12 and a half by 9 and a half. Um, I made sure that if it had prongs, remove the prongs, obviously. I make sure I pasted it closed, you know, lick and paste it, seal it, however you're going to do it. Um, and uh, so you also, like I said, um, if you want to, I used a piece of trim that came from some of the upholstery that I'm going to use on the edge of this journal. I don't think that's the same color I used last time. I think it was this color. That was kind of dark. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Um, I used uh, an upholstery trim or some kind of trim of your choice if you want to. If not, just you can sew around and not even need trim at all. But I liked how it looked, and so I'm going to add that today. So the first two, the, the cover and the inside um, of the cover are going to be 12 and a half by 9 and a half. They're about the same size as this manila envelope. Um, when I cut them, I used a rotary cutter and stencil to cut these out. Um, you can simply just lay down the fabric that you have. Um, <laughs> if you guys notice, I'm balancing. I have this, uh, my cat is on the counter and she wants to, I have like a little opening right here. She wants to sneak right in, and I keep trying to push her over. If you see me doing this a lot, it's like telling the cat, please do not come through here. She <laughs> wants this fabric so bad. So what I did is just, if you don't have a rotary cutter or stencils or anything, just simply open up the fabric, put your manila envelope on there, and just cut around the, the edges. I obviously, you can see here, I kept a little bit of extra fabric. Um, I'd rather have a little bit extra than under, because I really didn't want to see that envelope peeking out when I'm done. All right, so what I did was, here's the, the envelope. So that's the main envelope. I took it and I folded it in half and I made a nice crease. So it looks like a little book, right? Simple so far. Um, and then I'm thinking as I did this, guys. So, <laughs> so I take the cover, like the main cover fabric that I have here, and I made it face down on the table like that. Um, obviously, before you do that, you want to make sure when you put that envelope on there, what you want the cover face to look like. I want this to be at the front. So however you're going to do it, just make sure when you flip this thing closed like this, make sure you pick the color, the, the design you want, which I like that design. So that is the cover. And then the next thing I did was, obviously, this is the inside of that journal. Same size, 12 and a half by 9 and a half. Uh, give yourself a little extra room on that size just in case this fabric stretches or something when you sew it. So I took the, the right side and I put it right on top of that envelope. The envelope, obviously, I'm sure a lot of you guys already know, it's just to help make this journal thicker and stiffer um, to be like a book. You know, otherwise these fabrics would be kind of flappy. 
So as you can see, that's my inside. That's my outside. I said it's my outside cover and that's my inside cover. Now I wanted a pocket. So what I did was I took another piece of fabric that I like and I like this little rose color. It looks kind of almost Victorian. And it is three, you guys want to write this down, it's three inches wide. And I did 13 inches long. I made it longer on purpose because when you start to sew around the edges, if it does go in a little bit, at least you can cut that off at the ends, you know, at the very end. So find the side that you like, which I obviously like this. And so those would be the pockets. So when I open and close this book, and this is sewn all around the border here, I have a pocket on both insides of this journal. So that is that, and you can put that aside before you sew it. And if you want to, you can get your next piece of fabric cut, which this is going to be the folder that is on the inside here that's going to hold the booklet that I insert here. Now, I don't have the booklet because I sent them all to my mom and I wanted to do this video, but I didn't realize I didn't keep one of the booklets to show you. So the booklets that I put in here, if you've seen the video of my Mother's Day gift to my mother, um, down below, I'll put the link. I bought them off of Amazon. Um, they're the perfect size for this here. And you click on that link and you can purchase. They had the different selections of so many in a pot kind of thing. They were really inexpensive. They were lined. Um, and you can insert that into this cover when it's all said and done. I was so frustrated. I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't have the, um, the booklet to show you to put on the inside, which is fine. You guys seen that video. And if you haven't seen the video and you're watching us down below, I'll put the link of that video, the Mother's Day gift, to show you the, um, the booklet that goes inside here. This here is just the shell that holds that journal, that you can take that journal out, replace it with a new one. My, as I said before, my mom does a prayer journal, and she fills those journals up, and she can take that journal out and replace it. So this is just like a little page that's going to hold that journal for this. So that page, you want to cut that fabric 18 inches by 9.25. So it's not exactly half, it's just that line just under half. If you need any help, just message down below and I can show you um, the measurement in the picture form or something. If not, you can message me in the shop, I'll send you a picture. If you're not too well with measurements. Um, or just eye it, you know, but that is what it is. So what I did was I folded it. So here's that fabric that's 18 by 9.25 this way. So I took three inches. So here's, a, I have a little measuring tool here, three inches, and I folded it in three inches on either side. And I creased, same thing here. I folded this three inches and I creased. And then I just, you can pen it with pens. Like I have pens here. I just put them all over here. Um, you can pen them so they don't move. Like I'll pen the corners. So they won't move when I sew it together. And then you're going to put this guy aside as well. And then we'll take uh, that there and we'll start sewing that. And the stitch I'm going to use to sew all around the edges of that journal cover is going to be just a simple um, antique zigzag, not just a regular zigzag. If your sewing machine has an antique zigzag stitch or find any stitch you like. Uh, zigzag stitch is nice because when you do the, the borders, here comes the kitty cat, you stay. When you do the border, um, it helps with that, the fabric from fraying. Now, I don't know if you guys know that there is a fabric glue, which I don't have on me. I used to have it uh, when I used to sew a lot, but it's called fabric fray free fray or something again i'll put that link down below for you guys um and all you do is put that you touch the border of this after you sew it and it keeps from any of that fabric ever fraying off um which is really nice to have uh, for whatever project you're doing um so okay so i'm just gonna then i fold this in half like that and i put it aside you might have to play replay back play that video a few times to understand that i hope i made that make sense comment below if it confused you i'll do my best to message you back to help maybe explain a little bit better i haven't done a tutorial in such a long time i feel like all i do is cut fabrics for you guys <laughs> so the next thing i do is i take clips paper clips which i think i might just grab some paper clips paper clip all around the border and make sure it fits um, and that there's no orange sticking out so i'm going to press pause and i'm going to do that Okay, 
I'm actually going to zoom in just a little bit here. Hopefully I'm not going to ruin anything. Um, I actually decided to come back and show you. I found these clips in the drawer. They will work just perfectly fine. Um, I'm just going to clip, start with one corner. I'm actually start actually from the front because I want that front cover to look really good. Take this off, take this off, and I'm going to start here and make sure that this it's going to be just perfect and none of that orange sticks out. And if it does, whatever, guys, <laughs> you just cut it out, you know, and uh, it'll be just fine. Not to stress the small things, perfection. Um, you do your best to be perfect, but um, it will turn out the way it should. All right, so that looks pretty good. This guy, I'm going to start him here at the tip and let the long end hang off the end. And I can cut that piece. And I'm going to start with clipping him first. And then I'm going to go right here to the next part of the pocket because I don't, I want to make sure that envelope makes its way. There you go. I'm going to lift this. If you guys see that, stretch that fabric if I have to and clip that because that's where I'm going to start. The rest we can work with. And I'm going to take that machine and just start that first stretch. And then you can start clipping the other things when you go the next way. Because when you, if you start just sewing all, clip everything and start sewing, your fabric's going to shift. And last thing, if you know when you do that, when you, you do a journal and you're like, why did my fabric bulk? Why did that happen? It's because you clipped it all up and then you tried sewing on it and it adjusted, it shifted. Even though you had it clipped, it's not going to work. So you want to start with the first part right there and go straight across, take it out of the machine, make it flat, flip it through, make sure everything's all together again, and then we'll clip the next side. So let me start with this, and I'm hoping this machine's not gonna be too loud, and if it is, I will press pause, um, and then sew this, and then <laughs> get back to you guys. So let me press pause and get it onto the machine. Okay, I have a Faf machine I'm using. I maybe should have done used the Brothers to tell you which number or which type of pattern that was. But if you have a Faf, it's it's number 58. It's called the Antique Quilt Stitch. Um, so if anyone needs to know, that is the stitch. An Antique Quilt Stitch. I wish I could turn the camera around to show you. Zigzag Stitch is, uh, maybe I can write it on paper to show you the difference. Now, a zigzag stitch is like this. You know, you guys know zigzag, right? That's zigzag. Now, the antique stitch, it does like, um, it does like, a, it almost like a scallop. Like, it's it's really pretty. I'm really not making it. That's not the best analogy. I, <laughs> I wish I had a picture. But anyways, look on your machine and see if your machine says antique stitch or it says antique quilts or antique zigzag um, and see um, what it has. But I love how it gives it a little girliness. But um, in this case, it may not be as needed. I'm just, I was just picky. So let's hopefully see if this is not too loud. It's next to the speaker. Um, so when I put it on the machine, you know, if you have your, your pressure foot has lines, right? Um, so I put mine right, um, Lord, let me see here. Um, the first line on your pressure foot. So um, I wonder if I can get my camera to turn around now. But um, I just put it right on the border, that very first line on your foot. Um, and it, there's no, like, excessive, like, fabric on the opposite side. Just get it closest to the border as possible because all you really need is to sew that border um, and make sure it's stitched together. Um, you can do a back stitch if you like, but I don't do a back stitch because I'm going to be coming back around to um, to uh, to back stitch at the very end when I get to the very bottom. I just go for it. I'm a slow mo when it comes to sewing. I'm very particular. I want to make sure that every piece is in there. Um, there, I mean, you, if you're in need for speed, go for it. Me, um, I want the machine to work, but I don't want it to make it suffer. So I just kind of let that machine, last thing you want is a broken needle. So I just let that mean machine do its own speed. You know, no need to put your pedal to the metal unless you're in a hurry. I mean, go for it, but um, just enjoy, you know, just enjoy the pace. There's no hurry and you want to keep that needle. Last thing you want to do is bust the needle. I'm not a fan of needle busts. 
Um, <laughs> I don't like replacing them. It's, it's, I'd rather replace the machine. <laughs> oh, it's never fun doing needles, especially if you, it's hard to see, and then you have to, like, get a light down there. Um, and getting the right needle, and hope you have the right needle. So just take your time. There really, honestly, it's no, there's no need for speed. All right, I got the first one on there. So let's see. See the antique stitch. Isn't it pretty? That fray will come off at the very, very end, so no worries. All right. So the next thing I do is I'm just going to, like, push it across. We want that fabric just to lay flat. We don't want no buckle. I really want that this pocket to be on there next. So see now, aren't you glad that you didn't go around the whole thing? Because this will shift, see? And the last thing you want it to do is shift. So now you have the opportunity, since you only sewn that one side, undo the clip and just push it down. Lay everything flat. No bubbles, no buckle. And then you can put your pocket across and just push it across. And from here, make your little first little, okay, go to the next one. We want everything to match just fine. Like I said, I take my time. No hurry. There's no need to glue. No glue needed. The last thing you want is to put glue on your needle on your machine. And that glue is going to be poking down in that machine and coming back up. You're asking for trouble. Um, this here is no glue needed. No need glue. Just crease it across, measure it, kind of just push it in there, and clip it. These clips are awesome, I'm telling you. I recommend these clips, just so you know, better than any other clip um, I've used. And I like how that looks. It's laying nice and flat. And let's go ahead and just, let's go ahead and sew that on. Hello, beautiful. I want to make sure that that made it across. It did. Sweet. The excessive fabric you can cut off at the end. All right. I wish I could have turned my camera around and show you where I put this on, but you'll see. And if it makes it easier, take some fabric uh, before you start making this journal and put two upholstery fabrics together and practice on your machine sewing that design on the edge. So you can master it before you actually do it um, onto the sewing machine. Does that make sense? Practice. Practice with your stitches on different fabrics, the same kind of fabrics you're using. Um, and just uh, practice on them. My grandma used to do that. I remember her teaching me that as a young one. Not to just start your project. You practice on fabric, the same fabric you're using on your project, before you even start your project. So last thing you want to do is say for instance I mean I'm not sure what kind of sew machine you have what if you had a machine that um, you have to do dial dial the, the width and the length thankfully I don't have to do that on my machine it, it's an auto um, but some people I mean if you're watching and you have to adjust your your length and width on your machine practice on fabric before you actually practice your actual project um, so you know your stitches look good you don't want your tension to be wrong, and then you have thread popping up in every direction, and your bobbin <laughs> doesn't work right, or make sure everything works right before you even start that project. Again, guys, I'm like a granny with sewing. I am not huge on working fast. So if you need to fast forward, go for it. I, uh, I take care of my machines. I make sure that they are. I see you want to on your machine. You hear that sound, you know. Think about it. If you're pounding on a door or pounding on something, you know you are causing some kind of tension, right? But if you just listen, how the slow. I'm gonna backspace on this one. Back, back, back backspace. You know what I mean? Like back stitch. So then um, that will not unravel in the future. And there we go. All right, so that's smooth and ready to go. That looks good. We have a lot of fray right now, so don't you worry. Isn't that pretty? I can get all the different threads here out at the very end. My OCD will kick in here in a minute. <laughs> we'll deal with that later. 
All right, so I'm going to push that fabric again. Make sure that's nice. And I'm going to go from the top and do the same thing. But I want to make sure, I'm looking at this now, that it looks like, see how that fabric, even though it's all lined up, that bottom fabric, how it's stretched further. Even though I measured correctly, that's another reason to not clip everything all the way around because your fabric's going to, some fabrics are stretchier than other fabrics. So um, make sure you're looking for that. This is fine. I can go ahead and clip it. So I'm going to start from the top and make my way over. Make sure it's nice and taut. I noticed this fabric stretched, so I might even have to cut it. So I want to be, or I just sew from the top because that's where it's stretched. So the back fabric stretched further than my top fabric, and I want this journal to be um, the right size. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stretch this, and I'm going to sew from the top over, and then I can cut that extra fabric below the inside cover fabric. I can cut it. So I want to make sure I'm sewing on that envelope, right? So if I'm cutting along the new fabric that's stretched out, I won't be actually sewing on that envelope. But we want to be able to sew through that envelope. All right, that works for me. Start there, put it on my machine, go slow-mo. You might have to fast forward. I love my machine. <laughs> oh, all right, let's go here. It's going to be a beautiful, the stitch is just beautiful. I used it for this fabric. I used an ivory, ivy thread. Um, and uh, I like that. Sometimes white is too bold on older prints. And I uh, can't wait to clip that fray. It's starting to get to me. <laughs> My mom asked me this morning. She's like, do you, she's like, do you have a prayer journal? I'm having a little issue with that going through. We're going to do this. Um, and I'm like, oh, no. She's like, well, when you do that video, you should make that journal for you. And she goes, you need the prayer journal. And so I guess it begins. I don't know what I got going on here. This exact stitch is not working. Let me go ahead and uncut that. Press pause. It's not working there. I'm at the reconfigure the the sewing thing. Hang on, be right back. Okay, that was the first. My machine, the digital, because this is a digital one, um, it like it started wanting to do a straight stitch, and i not wanting a straight stitch, right? Let's see if it's going to listen. Um, and uh, so I had to like re redo the... All right, what are you doing? There you go. You got this. I'm not sure what it's deciding to do here. It's like it keeps wanting to go straight. Hang on one second, guys. Apologize. Okay, so I had to turn my machine off, turn it back on, and now I'm going to put in the right number, number 58. Um, it was starting to get, it started to want to eat the fabric <laughs> instead of, all right, let's just take two. At least you guys can get the real deal here. Um, see what happened and let's try this again. Be nice to my fabric. There we go. It started to uh, eat the fabric and the last thing I wanted to do is bring out the handy dandy seam ripper. I'm not a fan of seam ripping. Um, some people may like it. Some people say it's very calming when you make a mistake to take a seam ripper and rip out all the uh, threads. Uh, I don't. Um, uh, I'd rather do dishes. <laughs> so if I take my time and do it right, I can avoid the seam ripper. Um, would be my goal. All right, let's get this guy right through here. We're almost to the end. Again, if you have any questions, just comment down below. I could have done this live, but it was quick and easy for me to just simply do this. Uh, I have a lot of cutting fabric today to do. I have a big order that came in. I did a video of the order. And uh, so you guys will be seeing that video. It was quite frustrating. You'll find out why. Uh, when I do buy a bunch of items overseas, it's just the hard part of just um, 
it uh, being correct, your order being right, it being on time, uh, custom fees um, can be kind of trying um, and sometimes wear you down. So I'm trying not to be all worn down. So when you guys see that video, you'll know what I mean. Um, and you're going to see me frustrated. Um, but it's okay. It's part of the business. Um, but back to the story about my mom. She's like, you need a prayer journal. You need to start praying for people. And so I'm not, I agree with my mom. Um, maybe this, this, this project has, is encouraging me to do so. Okay, so you can see I have excess fabric. Look at that. So that's some stretching. We have one more side to sew and finish, which I will cut all this. But I'm going to, it's going to drive me nuts. So I need to cut that extra fabric off of there. And I'll take care of some of that fray as well. But again, there's, like I said, there's that fabric fray. You can get it. Uh, I'll put the link down below. I'm sure you'll find it on Amazon. And um, you can uh, take and just put your finger along the border and uh, that fray will stop. And it's not really tacky or gluey. It's really clear. Um, so you can't see it when you apply it, um, which is nice. I know as a quilter, I used to use it on some, like, say, uh, uh, um, clothing quilts. I used to make clothing quilts for children, custom quilts and stuff, which I haven't done that in years. But I used to do that when they wanted certain things to, to uh, that weren't turned over. Okay, so here, obviously, here's the front, guys. Here's the inside. We're getting closer. I got that one side to sew down. I need to stretch this across to make sure that all lays flat and we're going to do the same thing guys take your clips out this fabric is is uh longer so i'm going to cut some of it not all of it because it's going to shift a little and we don't want to lack fabric at the end but just enough so when i put the clip on it it doesn't turn over now if you want to you could have this this pocket you could have sewn a little cute design before you put it on here i didn't um, I could have. I did it on my mom's journal. Um, I did sew a design on this before I put that pocket down. But um, you don't have to. It's just if you want a quick, simple journal, you got this is quick and simple. I just wanted to show you a quick, simple one. Put the clip and clip there. All right, guys, I'm throwing back on the machine and that cover is almost done. All right, I'll put it back on that machine again. You might have to fast forward. I'm gonna, I'm going to back stitch on this because this is the very end. So I'm finishing that end of the stitch line and finishing the end of the opposite uh, stitch line. So it is a finished uh, border without any stitches coming out um, in the future. So all right, I'm gonna finish this guy up. Simple already, right? I hope I made it simple. And no glue. Nice, right? And I'm sure some of you guys don't have sew machines. And I, I'm sure it's... Um, you wish you could do this. And But now you know if you ever do get a machine, how quite simple it is um, to just throw one together. All right. Again, you might have to fast forward or I can press pause. Or I'll press pause for you guys and get back at it. Okay, that's done. Cut the threads. All right, so I'm going to cut the threads all around. Add that, that little no fray glue if you like. I kind of like having a little fray. I think it just adds some character. Now, if you guys seen the video of this journal that I made my mom, you can get a button for just, a, just for some kind of decoration on the front if you like, like how I did it or not. Um, so here's that, guys. There's the pocket on the inside. We still got to add that little journal cover page in the middle. So I take this, fold it in half, and then you can just crease it down the middle, and there you have it. That is just the shell of that cover. Cool, right? All right, so now this is the time where, I mean, you could have sewn uh, that on there. What I did when I did this is, because no one's going to see it, I put this on the border, and I just did a straight stitch. So I'm going to turn this back to zero, um, straight stitch, 
And I'm just going to do a straight stitch all the way down for you guys on this guy. I like doing it this way because if I zigzagged him, maybe I could have zigzagged him not straight. Um, I wanted him straight. So I just took that trim the top here, put them to the top. I give it a little bit of extra room at the top. You can cut that off at the end. I'd rather have some, some extra than not enough of. And I'm going to take that right here onto the machine and go just a simple straight stitch. If you want to do a zigzag again, you can. Um, but the zigzag you can see on the inside. Don't necessarily have to see that on the outside. All right, I'm going to start the stitch, but then I'm going to also backspace. So then you don't, um, the thread doesn't unravel through time. All right, and I'm going to do a straight stitch all the way down. It's going to look really cute. I just think it adds a little extra touch. I think it's adorable. I had little scraps left over and I thought, well, why not just try that and see how it looks. I was going to do it on the back side of the cover, but why? There's no need to. It was just mainly for the front of the cover and how it looks. All right. I'm going to backspace on that or back stitch on that backspace. That always reminds me of a on your phone or something. All right. Got the fly thread. So I'm going to turn it the inside here. See how much came off the top. Cut him. Um, how much came off the bottom? Cut him. All right. And there's that guy. He's cute. So there's the cover, guys. That's how simple that was. Now you're probably wondering how I did that inside folder. And I'll show you. All right. So let's bring out that other piece. Oh, that's right. I used that for the bookmarker. That makes sense. For those who want to make that little bookmarker for the inside of that little thing, i show you how to do that as well. All right, so you guys cut your inside fabric great, right? and you also turned it over like it was, and you guys can see how that's going to be on the inside of that, and that can be cool or what. And that's going to be, at the very end, that's going to be sewn down the middle, and it just flaps open like that. It gives you two more pockets as well. So what I do now is I fold those in to three inches like I told you guys, and I'm going to zigzag stitch straight down here. And I'm going to zigzag stitch straight down here. Not on this cover, of course, put him aside. Just this fabric here. Um, what I'm going to do before I do that is I'm going to undo this pocket. And I'm going to zigzag stitch this pocket so I don't have a lot of fray. This one I don't have to because it already has that huge fringe that's cute right there. So I'm going to undo this, this pocket really quick. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to zigzag stitch along this pocket line. It'll reduce any type of threads that run off, and we don't want to lose that pocket in the future. I need to change my stitch to zigzag. Number 58 again. Antique zigzag stitch. All right. Wrong one. 58. There it is. My eyes are trying to narrow in on that. All right. So I'm just going to take that stitch all along the whole border. There's no need to turn it over because uh, upholstery fabric is thick. Last thing is you want a little bulk. Um, and I don't want any bulk. Am I at the fast forward, guys? Okay, here, I'll press pause again for you guys. Okay. All right, it's got done. The zigzag stitch in this. You can't really see it, but it's been zigzagged. All right, so now I'll put that pens back in. If you think pens help you, I pen the corners so they don't shift on me. But, all right, again, you fold that fabric in. should be three inches on both, both ends. This one's, I got fray. So he's going to have a little bit more. I'll make sure I did that right so he fits in there really good. He will. All right. Yeah, he'll fit in there really nice. See? Okay. So I'm going to put them back on that machine. And what I'm going to sew, guys, is just the top of this right across and the bottom of this right across. That's it. You don't have to do any other sewing but the top and the bottom. It's just to do that, it cases this end so it has an opening for that folder to go into the folder sleeve. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this. I'll press pause. Okay. 
that is already sewn I zigzag stitched from the top and the bottom and that's it which left the cute pockets that you need for this journal there we go thought I got all the little frays all right so now you have left I'm gonna push that over a little bit to show you guys so here is the journal cover you open her up got a little fuzzies everywhere and then I take that cute little shell here which is the cover for your little journal that you're going to be able to insert and remove if you need to on the inside so what I did is this has been folded in half there is a spine area right there I just found the points of where that spine was at and I took that cute extra trim or ribbon or whatever you like this is the front right that's the top so I found where that spine crease is at and I took this and I set that down just like that gave it about a good inch in and just leave it there and we're gonna pin that here in a minute and then we took this here which we found the points I could see are here but you can't see where that spine is at um, I put this guy here and I laid him open just to see and then I'm gonna take my pen and I'm trying to make sure that this is center so you have some space on either ends about equal all around I'm gonna pen him it's gonna be kind of tricky this is gonna be a tricky part guys pen him because we're gonna sew straight down to here so I'm gonna fold this one more time like see my folding point I'm gonna put a pen right there an end point right here like that so I know that is where I'm gonna end and that is where our fold is and we're going to sew straight down well, I'm going to do the zigzag stitch straight down the middle so I'm going to take this to my machine move all these clips and such and I'm going to stitch it all the way down so let me press pause okay this part I'm going to show you it's kind of tricky it's good to go slow it's good to know where your crease is at and kind of eye it Last thing you want to do is use a seam ripper, right? <laughs> Just go straight down the middle. If you have to do uh, straight pens to guide you all the way down the middle, then go for it. I'm going to eye it, and it's going to be what it's going to be. And let's just fingers cross there's no seam ripper. But I have a feeling it's going to be just fine. I'm not going to strive for perfection. I'm just going to do my best. And I'm just going to take my time. As you guys can tell, I'm really good about that. <laughs> I'm like, doop doo doop doo doo on my machine. All right, we're just about there. And then, of course, at the top of that and the, the end of this, you should um, backstitch. Always backstitch. Because this is going to be um, um, almost like a book sleeve that you're going to insert and remove um, often and last thing you want is your stitch work to come undone so feel make sure at the very beginning and end that you do back stitch so it stays in there for a good long time and where I did that bookmarker I'm gonna go back up to it and I'm actually gonna back stitch a few more times all right let me back stitch here a few and then I'm gonna go to the top like I said you can see I just stitched all the way down the middle. All right, let's fingers crossed that we did good. I'm going to do that needle at the top. What's nice about that being paper, so right here, I'm just going to take and do it like a little stitch back and forth a few times on this. The last thing you want is that bookmarker to come out in the future. And you don't want to back stitch forward and back stitch too much because it would interrupt how that folder closes at the end, right? So just a few stitches there and a few stitches back. That's all you need. Nothing more. And make sure when you cut the thread not to cut your uh, bookmarker. <laughs> I did that once on um, a trial of learning how to do this. All right, just get those threads. All right, so this is going to be the bookmarker. Oops, I'm going backwards here for you guys. Um, so when I insert the book covers in here, this bookmarker will be able to mark what page you want. And you can cut this at the length that you want. Which I'll probably just cut it here. Again, you can add that fray. Or some people can probably take a lighter and just kind of lightly 
burn the edge if you want to, but I say just fabric fray would probably your best, best bet. All right, that closes. See here? I have to get some of the little fray that's happened around here. But look at you got yourself a really cool pocket here. And I got a lot of threads to do and a really nice pocket here. And there's your journal. You have to crunch it a little bit. There you go. And then you can add a cute little button there if you want to. You could probably, if you wanted to, you can sew a closure, a snap closure, or I don't know what our kind of closure you like, but that's how I did it. So I just take that booklet, insert it on the inside of here, and I have replacement uh, journals to bring in and out. So I hope I made that easy. I hope I didn't ramble too much. If I missed something or if there's something you have a question about, down below, comment. I will do my best to respond the best I can. But back to the story about my mom saying I should have a prayer journal. I think I should just make this my prayer journal. I should order some of those uh, booklets on Amazon, which again, down below is the link um, myself, and I should start a prayer journal. And, uh, and uh, I guess I can say if those who like um, are spiritual kind of people, down below, if you have a prayer request, I will gladly add you to my prayer journal. So if you have any prayers or anyone needs something, someone to pray for, um, or if you want to be discreet and you don't want to comment down below, you can message me in the Etsy shop or any of the social media links, uh, Messenger on Facebook and privately um, if you want me to, and I can add you to my prayer journal. So whoever I put in here, guys, I won't share to anyone else. So it will be totally my journal. So, uh, so you know. I will not be sharing on future videos anything that goes into this journal. I think that should be private, right? So um, again, down below, don't forget to message me any questions or anything you have to say that's positive and kind. Um, and uh, hope you guys have a beautiful day. I'm glad you like this video. Bye.